This place is very silent. Where's the music? Crates, crates, and more crates. Oh, great. That's not how the crane is operated. Right, probably gonna have to move something. Let me guess, there's a lever somewhere. I can't operate that thing, it's probably locked anyway. An almost empty roll of tape rests on the crate. Frozen cod. The shipping list must be in code. It's about to be loaded into the wyvern, anyway. Something tells me the true nature of this cargo is something far more... volatile. Yes. I think I know what's inside of these. These are crates full of silly string. Some kind of light metal beam is sticking out from the wall. The dumpster contains packaging material and other garbage. Aw, oh, one of the crates has been loaded onto the little train. Look at this thing, it's so cute! There's a small motorized train resting on the tracks. It's adorable. It's adorbs, with a Z at the end. Because I'm an asshole. I could just force my way, but uh, yeah, okay. Oh, no. There's a folder lying on the table. It's colors standing out from the rest of the paperwork. The folder is titled Operation Good Samaritan. Oh, I think we're getting to the heart of the name of the game, which I was kind of wondering about. The Samaritan Paradox. I don't want to leave empty-handed. I'll replace the documents inside with some other papers, hoping it'll take some time before someone notices it. Good idea. Operation Good Samaritan? Let's take a look at this, yes. Huh. As far as I can understand, these documents outline something called Operation Good Samaritan. Which is basically about bringing an agent... Uh, bringing an agent to bribe extremist warlords in certain third world regions. Jeez. The intention is to escalate the conflict and get them to buy Swedish weapons. Oh my god, they're trying to make the conflict worse just to make money? It seems Wyvern Exports... I keep saying Wyvern. Wyvern... It seems Wyvern Exports has gone rogue here, because even Fosorb is being kept in the dark. The Good Samaritan Bard is probably some kind of dark irony. Well, we fucking got him. Give this to the, to the reporter, who at this point is probably dead in some twist of the game. What do you bet? What do you bet I go back and he's dead, or gone? But, assuming that works out, he can nail them, because he is an investigative reporter, and this is the perfect scoop. Lots of shipping lists, receipts, and notes. I don't have the time to go through them now, and besides, they're all using code words. Interesting. Oh, yeah, I've already read that. Can't find any way to open this door, but I can hear sounds from the other side, voices and footsteps, so I probably can't get out that way anyway. Okay, what the hell way am I getting out then? What if I just grab this girder and, like, rip it off? That sounds like a good idea for some reason. Let's do it. Oh my god. Never mind, that does not seem like a good idea. That suddenly seems like a very bad idea. The crate hasn't been sealed properly. I can open it. Oh, I can be get. I can guess what I'm going to find. Weapon parts! There's a really heavy-looking weapon part inside. It's far too heavy for me to move. Alright, and there's no key in the ignition anyway. Yeah, so wait, where am I going? That way's blocked, there's footsteps this way, so that leaves exactly no ways to go. This is exciting. If I got a job here, I would have taken one look at this crane, and then I would have quit. 
moves one fucking pixel at a time. I can't even move more to the left, can I? You know there's something wrong with your crane when you can measure its movement speed in pixels per second. What the fuck am I supposed to do with this? I mean, I could... I, I don't even know, like, on what... I have no sense of depth here. Where is this? Is it along the track? I could pick up the train cart, but why? If it is along the track. If it's not, then... I didn't walk through. Oh my god, just where am I supposed to put this slow piece of shit? Wait, what? I think this walkthrough might be miswritten or something. It says, be aware of the position of the girder at the right-hand side of the room. But it's on the left. Mm-hmm. I'm supposed to use the crane controls to attach the hook to the weapon part. Why? Why would I do that? What am I going to do with the fucking weapon part? I'm going to MacGyver some shit here. Tape the weapon part to the girder, use some... Some, uh, some... St use the silly string. I'll use the silly string from the other crates. And I'll, uh... Shoot my way out of here. Or something. It's not even clear that the weapon part has a handle that I could even connect to. It's not even clear where this damn thing is on the track. Where do I connect it? Does it connect here? What? Okay, I probably need to go there in person. I have to move the hook zero clicks to the left. Okay. And three clicks up. What? You literally have to get it per pixel accurate. And they actually realized the puzzle was so fiddly that they even just said, you know what, forget it. We're just going to make it so you can click on it and it tells you exactly how close you need where, where you need to go, because otherwise you can't tell. I... I'm... Why? Dear God, why? Why? Damn, we're footsteps approaching the door. I need to hurry now. Did I move it too far up? I don't need to keep track of the hook now. Can I actually move it now? Is it connected? I didn't make even make a sound. Is it... Oh, okay. The sound of a uh, hook connecting to a gigantic piece of... artillery or whatever this is, is uh, apparently the sound of silence. Am I throwing this away? What am I doing with this? No, seriously, what am I doing with this? Attach it. Until it's level with the girder. Lift the weapon direct upwards until it's level with the girder. Without exiting the crane controls, use the roll of tape on the left arrow of the crane controls. And then quickly interact with the opened crate. Is... I... Okay. 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 
Hopefully the weapon will end up in the dumpster by the time they arrive. Why would it end up in the dumpster? Apparently it wasn't very well connected in the first place, which means it could have fell off at any second and, like, crushed him and made everybody run inside when they heard the noise. The weapon slid off the hook when it bumped into the girder. Why did I even have to do that? Why didn't I just move it kind of out of the... I mean, why didn't I just dump it in the dumpster? And why did I have to tape it? Why? 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 Luckily, the interior of the box is rather soft. Here we go, footsteps are approaching. There's a little gap between the crate and its lid. I can peek out. All right, let's load on that last crate. I'll sort out some more paperwork. And then I'll have a proper chat with the security officer. Yay! I'm going to another country with horrible warfare and illegal guns. The crate is being lowered into a cargo room. Hold it. Someone screwed up here. Let's check that crate. Well, ain't this fucking great. The part wasn't even packed. I probably can't force my way out of here, but if I could somehow prevent being trapped... I could at least try to sneak out. Tell Frederick to get back here, bring the crate back, and pack it properly. We have to be off soon. Yes, boss. Better save it, because I'm sure I'm going to have to repeat this stuff a bajillion times. A ba ba jillion. A bajillion Tims. I need to hurry up now. There's nothing special with the trolley. We've already established that the ship is carrying weapons and I don't have time to examine the cargo further. Right, we should probably just go out the door. It's no use, the handle doesn't move, I'm trapped in here. Oh, fucking wonderful. Yep, of course. So I need to stop the door from shutting all the way. Shutting the door now would lock me inside the room with Steve, which would only end badly, okay? Right now. What? Do I have something on me? That I can like wedge in the door? I'm supposed to stop it from closing without them noticing, obviously. Why do I have to use the door to make the game restart? Okay, what? I know, shove the stupid book in the hinge. That'll work. Oh, this is an escape sequence filled with tension. An escape sequence you have to do 20 times over. Until you find the right item that magically works. Tape. I'll careful, carefully tape over the locking bolt. He's walking towards the door and you're going to reach your hand out to the locking bolt in plain view. And Mind you, to cut off a piece of tape, tear off a piece of tape, it sounds like... So you're going to go behind the door and reach your hand visibly out where we're right around where the guy's looking and walking towards and he's not going to notice. Okay. Thanks to the tape, the door never locked properly. And thank God he said that was actually the last of the tape, which means I don't have it in my inventory anymore, which means I can't use it. Which is great. Less items, less annoyances. Marginally.
Bad idea. There's a lot of people on the deck right now. It's locked. Of course it's locked. Footsteps are approaching from the other side of the big door. Let's go up. I have no business on the poop deck. <laughs> poop deck. Uh, Captain? I'll go upstairs and get some fresh air. Get her out of here, Captain. You! What the hell are you doing here? Caught. Aw, oh, darn. Oh my god. Now the game becomes, guess what the designer intended you to do? Okay, so I just go back down. Oops. Hey, who the hell are you? Rats discovered. I was pretty close. No. No, I wasn't. I really wasn't. Tell me what to do, walkthrough. Quickly walk to the corner of the room directly left of the door. <laughs> ensure that <laughs> the walkthrough says, ensure that you click on the floor and not the wall, otherwise Ord will simply stand in front of the door with his hands in his pockets. This is not immediately apparent due to how the, sp the sprites clip through each other. Okay, don't click on the wall, click on the floor. I'll go upstairs and get some fresh air. Get her out of here, Captain. I don't think it worked. Oh, no, it did. Okay. Cool, cool. Ooh, trench coat. There's a key here. Oh, I wanted to wear it. People look awesome in a trench coat. All stealthy-like. Opening the bathroom door is an insane idea right now. Why do you say that? Is there somebody behind it? Oh, there's someone in there. Alright, so I've got a key. It's probably all I need. Let's check the briefcase. Might be some more MacGyver shit. It's not locked. Cool. I won't touch the money. Just restore the bag in its original state. Okay, fine. Um, I think that's it. Thingy? Nope, not a thingy. I've got a key. I don't know what it's for. What is it for? Home key. It's the key I found in the cabin of the wyvern. Okay, whatever. I can't go there. Now there's people outside. I think the ship is departing. If I want to leave, I need to hurry up, or we'll be f too far out. Okay. Mm. Search the trench coat to obtain a key. Search the side pocket of the black lug luggage to obtain a passport. Hmm, half a dozen passports in various countries. Some of them have a different name, so I presume they're fake. Let's take a closer look at the Swedish one. Severigi Sweden Suede. You're welcome. Okay, that is very fascinating. A man about my age, I strongly suspect Jonas Alm is a fake name, considering the other passports of other names. I'll grab the passport and maybe we'll prevent this person from carrying out whatever dirty business he's up to. <laughs> They're probably going to shoot him at the border. Yeah, I'm a hero. Interact with the porthole and then the water below. Okay, I guess we're going out the porthole. Bye! This is really dangerous. A couple of minutes in water. This cold is all you can take. I swim well. I was raised at the sea. But the cold is making my limbs go numb. Maybe I should have found another way to leave the ship. The ghost is quite pretty from here. Wait, I can click? Where am I? The Fardo Ferry? It has seen me. Oh, saved by the 5 o'clock ferry. I'm causing quite a scene as they drag me out of the freezing water. <laughs> I was going to explain this one. I decide to go back to Bergwall's cabin to get dry and warm. Ord! 
Oh, hi, Sarah. My God, you're soaking wet and shaking. What's happened? I fell into the water. I have to get out of these clothes and into something dry. Let me get you a blanket. Oh God, this is gonna turn into some That's cheesy sex scene, is it? Up in the water. I'm sorry you had to put yourself through all that for the stupid book. Oh, it's not only for the book, really. I've become quite emotionally invested in this whole story. Bergwall's death, the dirty arms deal, even Freya's fate. I need to see the end. Freya? Oh, her. My life has a clear focus now, a direction. I've got momentum. So, anyway, what are you doing here? I came here to sort out everything worth saving here. I'm going to sell the estate, and I just want to make sure I don't throw away anything important. Veronica is going to come and help me inventory all this later tonight. We need to get rid of as much as possible. You do? Yes. Don't ask me why. I just know we need to. Fine. I just hope you don't get rid of all his stuff before I've solved the mystery of his book. You're still free to keep what you want, but you should probably hurry. I can't bear the burden of my father's remnants much longer. Hey, we'll iron your clothes and get them as dry as possible. You probably have a lot to do. I'm not in a hurry. <laughs> is that just like some polite thing to say or is that some sort of a, oh, I don't think I need my clothes. If you know what I mean, wink. I'm actually gonna say that just to see what happens. What the hell, let's see what happens. I'm not in a hurry. No. I mean, I could stay here a while, if you don't mind. Oh, or you don't know how much I'd like to just rest. Just take it easy. I'm lonely in this town. I could spend a night here, in this cabin, with you. I like you. I trust you. But now's not the time. Tonight is not the night. I can't relax. My mind is elsewhere. That's all right. Let's get that iron hot, then. <laughs> Two hours of ringing and ironing later? Okay. That was awkward. Wait, why is she still here? Hi. Ord. Uh. These things don't interest me that much. Sure, it sounds terrible, but what am I going to do about it? Oh, I don't know. Call the police? It's okay, though. I've got it handled. Hmm. I'm not familiar with that story. It sounds like he's taken one of his typical fairy tales and made it longer and more complicated. There's nothing pointing to how I could access some sort of reward? Nope. And nothing else out of the ordinary? Not really, no. Are you nervous about the contents of the book? Uh, nah, not really. A fairy tale made complicated and longer. Thank you! I agree. Uh, yeah, whatever. I... Can I just go to bed? It's too early to sleep. Is it? It looks nighttime. Oh, I mean, I guess it was the five o'clock ferry, so it's probably not more than a couple hours later. Mail? Nope. Right, I have a key. What is it to? It says home key, so it's to someone's home, but... To whom's home is it? I don't know, but I believe I should go tell this guy. Oh, I should probably go talk to the person at the Iron Square. I forgot her name. Oh, he's not dead. I'm surprised. Hey, Jorgen. Yep. Good gravy, my boy. This is some serious stuff. <laughs> Good gravy, my boy. documents that give away the operation. And I've seen the weapons in the cargo room of the Weinver. And in the secret tunnels under Fardo. You want me to take this from here? I could make just the right calls. This means the end of the dirty arms deals. And it won't stop at Wyvern Exports. They're gonna drag Fosorb with them. 
It'll be the scoop of the year. You can have it. I'm not a journalist. I trust you can make most of the situation. I'm just wondering what's in this for you, or Sarah. That's what I need to find out now. Just do your thing in the meantime. You betcha. No worries, buddy. Okay, so I give him the documents, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Let's go back, by the way. And let's not forget about Herbert. And now I talk to people. Excuse me. Hi there. Hi, Ord. All right. I'm not really interested in that, Ord. I'm investigating Jonathan's death, and I've ruled out Wyvern already. Okay. See you around. All right, where the hell am I supposed to go? Okay, I'm supposed to go to Fardo... Fardo Port? Go to the convenience store, ask the store owner about Jonathan's murder, and then ask to see the boat. What? How am I supposed to possibly think that? The boat? What? What boat? Why would I go to the convenience store? Well, who cares? It's always a good time to visit this guy. Hello! Hello there. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Can I ask you about... Jonathan's murder? Is it this? Ah, Bergwall. The island's only celebrity. Unless you count certain minor players. I actually already had this conversation. A variable renaissance man. He... You would always stop to chat for... Wait, no, is that... Oh, here we go. I haven't heard any rumors to that effect. As far as I know, he drowned himself during an early boat trip. He really liked those trips. Did you know he bought the boat from me? Only the best was good enough for that man. I can't say I knew that, no. That fateful morning. Was it three months ago? Yeah, he, he, he just downed a bottle of whiskey and threw himself overboard. I still have his boat. It drifted ashore not far from my boathouse. The police have examined it and released it, so to speak, but no one will bring it. So I guess the family isn't interested in boats. I plan to make it a tourist attraction. You know, celebrities and deaths. Did you know they even consulted me when they dived for his body? Yep. Does anyone dispute that it was a suicide? No, he left a note which the police confirmed was legitimate. Uh, nobody doubts he killed himself. He even wrote a book titled My Last Secret uh, just before. It's like a big PR stunt. Pretty clever if you ask me. The book has sold really well. I have it in my store if you're interested. I have a copy, thanks. Can I go see that boat? I'm his son-in-law. Kind of. I could let Sir Bergwall know if it's worth keeping or not. Sure, I keep it in my boathouse. Uh, just let me know when you're ready to go there. Alright, yeah, I'm ready. Yes, he bought a boat for... <laughs> my... Hello? <laughs> Can we go... Sure, I just have to finish this crossword. Uh, the deadline is today, and they emptied the mailbox in an hour. The first prize is a brand new outboard engine by Pelican. I see. 
But if you're in a hurry, you could always help me. Go uh, fuck sure, yourself. I can give you a hand. Go it's fuck a yourself. Big no. And it's about bo Jesus, you've all I don't Are you serious? Wow. You know? You know? I used to love you. But I'm afraid. I just can't. Anymore. Hello there. <laughs> I should... Please. How do I... How do I help them? Where's... Oh. Literature themed crossword and the shop owner has only solved two words on his own. For most people, this would take a day to solve. Let's take a look. Fifteen minutes later. Alright, I've solved everything but one word. Okay, well that makes it easier. Just one dot. These kinds of puzzles. There's one more word that I need more clues to solve. Coincidentally, it's about a Jonathan Bergwald detective. Not exactly my cup of tea. Type the word and hit enter. That's probably not the word. Hmm. Um, hmm. So what is it? Um, late Bergwall P.I. Okay. He wrote stuff about things. Um, I know he wrote detective mysterium novels. Do I still have his... Is it... Hold on. Where's the book? Do I still have his book? The Latin book. The book's gone. Where'd I find a copy of his books? Well, the great thing is, I don't care. Complete the crossword. Um, Vickland is apparently the name. That's it, the crossword is solved. Here you go, all solved. Let's hope you win that outboard motor now. Fantastic, great job! Hello there. Oh! Can we go see Bergwall's boat now? Can we go see Bergwall's boat now? Sure, let's go! Wonderful! I'll sort some papers in the office while I'm here. Uh, give me a shout if you need anything. Jonathan's boat is the wooden one closest to the entrance. Just take your time. Thanks. By the way, I also arrange fishing trips if you're in. Yes, 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 yes. I'll keep that in mind. A bucket of paint drying slowly. There's a wooden stick in it. Let's give it a stir. I guess I can use a piece of wood. God knows you don't have one, Ord. I'm not sure why I just insinuated that Ord doesn't have a penis. As if that's somehow some sort of an insult. Lock doors before leaving. I 
I'd say that's a butane gas burner. I'd say you're probably right. Ow. Well, I think he's about to not have a penis in a second. Let me just stand a little closer. There we go. He probably doesn't want me to mess around with his gear. Okay, can I turn this thing off? This is really annoying. <laughs> he just walked right through the flame. <laughs> That's not the boat I need to investigate. Okay, where is it? Which one? Oh, it's the one called Jonathan's Boat. That makes sense. Let's see if the police have missed something. Considering this is a suicide case, they probably haven't been too meticulous in their examination. Huh. What might this be? There's scratch marks near the ore lock. They appear random at first glance, but the cryptologist in me senses a pattern. The engravings are very subtle, though. Hmm. Okay, the paint stick doesn't help me. What would help me? Hold on, there's probably more stuff I need here. Or maybe not. Paper knife, that's not gonna help. So they're too faint, so I need what? Like... Um... Like graphite powder or something? Maybe not graphite powder, but you know, some... Like fingerprint stuff? Actually, is fingerprint stuff graphite powder? It might be. I didn't remove it, just to put it back. Okay. What am I supposed to do with this burner? Let's get this charred. Oh, that, okay. Burn stick. Yeah, you keep burning yourself, Lord. There are other ways to make the scratches appear better. Okay. I've burnt one end of the stick. What am I... what? I'm guessing I'm supposed to make some sort of a rubbing or something. Damned if I care to figure out how to do it, though. Oh, I'm supposed to take the note. Because... Because this piece of paper works. But this one doesn't. Because it's special paper. I don't even know what to do with it now. What do I do with it? There we go. I've created a carbon copy of the scratches found on Jonathan's boat. Max... something. It's a person's name, isn't it? Max saw us. Curious. Okay. Who's Max? If I've encountered a Max, then I've forgotten. And then go back to the convenience store and ask about it. Ask about the boat. Go to the church hall and ask the waitress about the boat. Okay. Hey, I'm ready to leave. 
All right, I'm done too. Let's go. Okay. If you're looking for a newer boat, I can give you a special price. Thank you. I'll consider it. No, no, that's quite all right. I'm barely supposed to ask about the boat. Hello there. <laughs> Do you know anyone called Max? I think Anita has a neighbor called Maximilian. You should ask her. Anita, uh, that's the lady serving coffee in the church hall. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> My pleasure, mate. Okay, at least the connection between him and talking to Anita is actually there. It's a pleasant change of pace. Still haven't gotten to ring that bell. Hi there. Hello. Do you know someone called Max? Well, there's a certain Maximilian renting the house next to mine. Why? Huh. Uh, what can you tell me about him? He's a retired photographer. He comes here once in a while and takes pictures of the archipelago. I think he's left the island for the season, though. Any idea where I can find him? I happen to know that he's showing some of his pictures at a posh restaurant down by the Red Rock. It's impressive that someone so old, hardly any eyesight left, can still take such good photographs. He basically knows where to aim the camera without even seeing what's there, and the photos turn out wonderful. That's impressive. You might be able to catch him there. Or at least admire his works. Thanks a lot. You're welcome, darling. So, Red Rock it is. You're I was totally just spacing for a second. Um... There it is. Ooh, colorful. All like graffiti. Oh my god. Th that's not graffiti. The silly string crates have come here. They're using them here. In Sweden. Commuters crossing the river to work or return home. The wall is covered with graffiti. Let's take a look at the graffiti. I'll read one of the messages. With great power comes great arrogance. There are some nice photos on the wall. They're signed by a certain Maximilian... Hortland. I'm just gonna ignore the J. Can't see anything special with this one, though. I guess I'm looking for something special. Whoa, there's a boat in the distance here, but I can't make out the faces. A boat? Hmm. Could be relevant. The maitre d' or whatever that is would throw me out if I started messing around with the lamp. If I can get my hands on one of these prisms without messing with the lamp itself. Wait, was that an incomplete thought? Yeah, what the hell? It's like an unfinished sentence. If I could get my hands on one of these prisms without messing with the lamp itself... The end. Hello, D. Hello there. Hello. Table for one, please. Uh, table for one, please. Are you a wedding guest? Uh, no, I'm not. Then we can't offer you a table tonight. The restaurant is fully booked. Hmm. Do you have a magnifying glass I could borrow? No, I certainly don't. And if you don't belong to the wedding company, I suggest you come back another night. Alright. 
seem like a cheerful chap. Thank you. Do you know the photographer? I believe they're rented from a local picture agency. I heard the photographer is nearly blind. He just points his camera and shoots. Fascinating. Goodbye. Goodbye. Why is the vase for this plant purple? It contrasts weirdly with everything else. Hmm. And there's a small window high up on the wall. It can be opened and closed via a lever. I don't think that guy would appreciate it if I touched his stuff. Maybe I can make him operate the lever for me. I just realized there's only one chair in here that seats a single person. Weird. The Major D can't see me here. Let's crank up the heat. <laughs> I just walked by the purple plant, even though he knows that I can't enter, and I know he knows I can't enter, and I know I can't enter. I just walked behind the purple plant, and he's not staring at me. And cranked up the heat, and then I'm going to ask him to open the window. And he's not suspicious. Okay. Hello there. Hello. Or... Maybe not. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, there we go. I can hear the wind humming outside. Right, I'm not sure what that accomplished. Wind. Yay. Wind. Okay, apparently it's aired out, so it's a time thing. So this entire puzzle is simply because I'm too fucking stupid to find somewhere to buy a magnifying glass. I need a prism from a lamp. Do I just need... I don't think I can get the lamp when he opens it. I don't think I can. I'm pretty sure it took away my cursor. Let's wait for the temperature to climb again. <laughs> Why doesn't... No, yeah, I can't. So I need, like, a strong gust of wind? I have an idea involving the opening of this door, but I have to time it right. I need to wait until... What? I'm doing some shit with air pressure? Okay. Come on. Created a draft. So this guy knows that I'm not allowed in here, and I know I'm not allowed in here. I just walked over to the purple thing behind the freaking bush and suspiciously bent down and messed with the radiator, and now it's mysteriously hot, and he just keeps flipping open and closed the window rather than just turning down the radiator's heat. And I just opened the door, which caused this thing to shake and an obvious visible piece of this thing to fall off. And now I'm just picking it up and he's not suspicious at all. If I was this guy and Ord was in my lounge, I would call the police because I say there's a fucking crazy person here. Whoa, what the... There we go. Disappeared for a second. What, what the... Okay. I'm assuming that's Jonathan, and that's... Who? Who is that? And that's Jonathan sitting in the boat, and with him is... What, is it Sarah? Veronica, the private nurse. It... Did, did I call... Did I call that the nurse would be involved? I'm pretty sure I did, didn't I? Because she's the one that nobody would suspect. I'm almost certain that I called it. She was in the boat with Jonathan the day he died. Okay, suspicious. I'm gonna get out of here. Sleep up. 
fucking with the window. Drive me crazy. Okay. Um. Now what? There's a lot of things I could do. I could go talk to Sarah. Hmm. Oh, I gotta go visit Patrick. So to do that, I need to go visit whatever her name is at the Iron Square. Excuse me. Hi there. Hi. So Veronica was in the boat with Jonathan. Obviously, this makes her the prime suspect in my eyes. I wonder what her motive was. I'll have to investigate this thoroughly. Since you helped me with the case, I guess I owe you this piece of information. He has an overnight flat downtown. Let me check the address. East Harbor Street, 14. Flat number 71. Thank you. I'll contact you when I've made any progress with the case. Glad I could help. I guess Veronica is really in trouble now. See you around. There's no answer when I'm knocking. And the door is locked. Right. Ah, uh, yeah, so what am I supposed to do? I don't even care to try to figure out any puzzles anymore. Oh, right, the home key. Well... Patrick is obviously involved then, huh? Yep, it fits. This is the key to Patrick's flat, and it must have been Patrick on board the Wyvern. Patrick's temporary flat is fancy, but very desolate. Oh, and there's another trench coat. I doubt there's anything more in there that I need. <laughs> Could he be any more suspicious? I'm sorry, but people who own trench coats are suspicious. Owning a trench coat is suspicious. Wearing it is even more suspicious. A travel guide to the Arabian Peninsula and some crime stories. The flat has a nice view over downtown Gothenburg. I don't need to do anything with the view. Let's check the drawers. Oh, I struck lucky immediately. There's only one thing in this drawer, a bundle of documents titled Chapter 3. Oh. Well, oh well. Seems it was a wise decision stopping the ship and checking back here. I'm sorry, but I'm not in a position where I can let a burglar get away. It's nothing personal. Dan was really careless to just walk right into the flat like this. Keep your hands where I can see them and walk slowly to the so- Thank you. Stun gun. He's probably out for a little while. Take what you need. We need to bail. I'm pretty sure he's not alone. I... I think you just saved my life. We can get emotional and shit later now. Chop chop! I'll keep a guard outside. Hurry up with whatever you need to do here. I'll just grab the third chapter. Okay, am I supposed to speed read this chapter? No, I think that's all I need to do, alright. <coughs> 
You go ahead and scram. If Patrick has company, they'll wait downstairs. We shouldn't be seen together. He never saw me. I can pretend I just came to visit him. Are you sure? Look, just do as I say. Patrick has seen you now, but he probably has no idea who you are. If he wakes up, I can stall him for some time, but you need to get the hell out of here. All right. Hey, I'm doing this as quickly as I can. <laughs> I leave the building looking as innocent as I can and head to the tram station. Cool. So, Sarah, I've got a few things to tell you. I'm assuming you're here. Hopefully, maybe, perhaps. I should probably read the book. Well, I should probably call the fucking police, but, you know, adventure game, so I should probably read the book. Seems like a final confrontation. There's a campfire spreading some warmth next to the camp. She assumed that was she assumed that was me, Mir, the village chief. I mean, sorry, the village chef. He was staring intently at the altar. That was Fenrir, the man who had tricked and ambushed her by the beach. He was busy observing the altar. A slain beast lay on the altar, upon which lightning struck repeatedly. The ritual must be in its final phase, she thought, since the two men were co content with observing the process. Excuse me, I've brought your milking bucket. Okay, apparently I don't burn it. I guess I just talked to him. Oh, maybe not. What do I actually want to do here? Okay, I don't want to be discovered, so wait, what am I doing? Am I just trying to stop it? Oh, I'm supposed to pick up the spyglass. This... this... where? Oh, right, I'm supposed to pick up the spyglass, it is practically invisible. Ermagerd. By the gods, she thought. It's Samita's daughter. Scanning the ocean, surely seeking to avenge her mother. She doubted Fenrir and Mimir had seen the dragonling. They would hardly dare proceed with the ritual if they had. Okay. Uh, again, what am, what am I even doing here? What am I trying to do? She couldn't tear off the canvas with her bare hands, so am I supposed to cut it off? Why do I want the canvas? I don't even know why I'm here. Am I just here to stop the ritual? Maybe the dragonling would recognize the signal. Holy crap, that water actually looks really beautiful. That's a wonderful animation there. Look at that. Hey, you there. Who, me? Fenrir, who is that? That's not my disciple. She, she's a Vindar spy. As if I had not heard that before. That matters little at this point. We are moments away from summoning the mighty war demon. Perhaps our new friend wants to watch. It would be quite a spectacle. 
Actually, I have come to prevent you from performing the ritual. This disruption annoys me. Child, step back and do not bother us more. You stole my golden horn and threw me in a dungeon to perish. And now you want to start a terrible war. As they spoke, Frasia could see the dragonling draw ever nearer. <laughs> you mean this horn? This horn belongs to me now. Behold its beauty. Dragonling, get him! He stole your mother's treasure and slew her. Get him! By the great snake, what? Who are you? I am Freya, commander of the dragons. I have come to stop the war. Spare me, oh Freya. The people of Engsmark have suffered enough under your despotism. I banish you from this land. Go and spread your false doctrines elsewhere. If you ever set your foot here again, you will end up on the dragons' menu, just like Fenrir. I will obey. Thank you for sparing my life. One day later... And the whole town is already different. It's like a spell has been lifted. I'm glad to hear. We will open the borders and start trading with other people again. And we will never sacrifice our young to hunt the stupid horn. You will be a legend here, Freya. Try to rest some more. I will take care of things. Yes, maybe I should rest some now. Then I should... Relax, Freya. You can stay here. This can be your home. He drew her to him, and after a long embrace, she realized what she had been wanting all the time. Him. She sighed in delight as his hand started to slowly caress her. What the fuck happened to this story? Young, perfect skin. Um. She sighed with, uh, what the hell? All the time I've pictured Torgov as a younger Jonathan and Frasia as a younger Sarah, so this... this is, You know, that's actually what I was kind of... suspecting after a few comments Sarah had said. She seemed to worry about worried about what I might read in the book. I think there might be more reason to why she hates her father, more than just his stupid puzzles. I can't possibly read any more of this. I had a feeling Jonathan had some issues, but never in my life did I expect this. This is absolutely... Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Sarah. Where do I find her? She's still at the cabin. Uh, apparently I'm supposed to go back to the cabin. Rather, oh no, that's not it. There's a note. Sarah must have left a note behind. I'm meeting Veronica at the harbor. We'll be back around 9 p.m. Sarah. That's some half an hour from now. I must have just missed her. It doesn't feel good that Sarah is to meet with Veronica when I don't know Veronica's motives. I should try to intercept the meeting. Hello? say you were joining us. I just happened to pop in. I thought Sarah was going to meet you. We must have missed each other. I had to ask a villager the way here. I guess everyone here knows where the Bergwall shack is. So Sarah should be here any minute then. And we can begin sorting stuff. Hmm. Hmm.
I'm not sure if I should feel in danger or what. Maybe... Hmm. I've just read the terrible thing. A terrible thing? Tell me. Jotun wrote a book to Sarah before he died. I've just read it. And, well, there are some truly appalling details in there. To answer your next question, no, that's not just a fantasy of his. It's more of an... I don't know if confession is the right word. So you know the background. One day, Signai, Sarah's mother, had a moment of clarity. Relative clarity, that is. Then she decided to confide in me. Like a bolt out of a blue sky. Or confess, maybe I should call it. All the things Jonathan had done when Sarah was a little girl, and how Signai had chosen to forget. Ironically, she eventually developed Alzheimer's and forgot for real. Like some kind of divine punishment, I don't know. But Jonathan, nobody punished him. Except himself, I guess. Well, you read about it, and you know just as well as I do what a psycho he was. Veronica, I know what you did. I know Jonathan didn't punish himself. You punished him. I've seen photos of you in the boat with Jonathan Bergwall the day he died. That's... that's impossible. Unlikely, but not impossible. Someone happened to take some photos of you. I've seen them myself. Oh, fine. There was no other way. I had no real proof of his deeds. Nothing that would hold up in court. And when Sarah told me about her pregnancy and I got really afraid for her safety, what if he would do the same? Sarah's pregnant? So that was the secret Veronica said she'd keep for me. Huh? What do you... Sorry, Veronica. I should come clean. I'm not Sarah's boyfriend. She hired me. <laughs> this is all so weird. Hired you to sort out the book and all that crap Jonathan pulled? Yes. To be honest, I don't really know why she thought of me being her boyfriend would be such a good idea. Oh, that part doesn't surprise me. She doesn't see the father anymore. It was a short and ugly affair. I think you were being around... Well... That gives her a sense of normalcy, I guess. Having a boyfriend around when you're pregnant. <laughs> I'm sorry you were deceived. No worries. But back to Jonathan. So Sarah had confided in me. But I knew that her memories of her father had been long suppressed. The last thing she needed was him to bring it all back up. I understand. All his high and mighty preaching. All that holier-than-thou attitude. I swear half of it is just bad conscience. Well, now it's in your hands, Ord. You can hand me into the police, you can tell Sarah the truth. You know where I stand in this. I'll take responsibility for what I've done. I'm sorry. I've already turned you in. They're probably looking for you as we speak. I see. Well, you did what you had to. I'll be off. I won't be caught that easily. Don't try to stop me. Tell the police I threatened you with a gun and took off. Veronica, I regret turning you in now. Let me know if there's anything... <laughs> Shit. I have the chance now to hide the truth from Sarah. I should take it before I go search for her. Um... Yeah, it's what the walkthrough said is to just use the typewriter to like rewrite the last chapter or something. Why would I really do that though? Does it actually force you to do that? I should do something about the terrible book ending before showing it to Sarah. Yes, let's hide it from her. That seems like a great idea. Okay. Maybe I can manage to edit the ending before I show it to Sarah. Funny, I'm writing. Prose. Well, PhD will be, uh... PhD thesis will be done in no time. Alright, let's go look for Sarah. I told you I have no idea where he is. Why don't we just hang around until he shows up then? And pick someone smarter next time to run your errands. This guy was dead easy to track down. What do you want from him? He hasn't done... Oh, come on. He's infiltrated Wyvern, stole my passport, then broke into my apartment and stole Father's book. 
He even snuck into the church and pretended- We don't have to get into that now. Do you think we can let someone like him be on the loose? Besides, if you had him steal Father's book for you, I recommend you burn it. Why should I burn it? So only you can access the inheritance? My silly sister. There was never a hidden inheritance. I can tell you what's in the book right now if you want. That won't be necessary. There he is. He won't get away this time. Ah, this is cute. Sarah hired him to find Father's book, and now that he's read it, he doesn't want her to know. Hate to break it to you like this, sister, but Father only wrote the book to- Hey! Or oh, no! You fucking shot him! It's my nerves, I get all shaky. Oh, but for fuck! That one's trying to get away! Larson, get him! I've never been shot before. I guess your last moments last forever. Seeing how nothing can follow. Either that or I'm simply not dying. It's rare. Getting the opportunity to alter the past. I think Sarah's finding the book now. It's alright, Sarah. You can read it now. Frasia left Torgoff's cottage, and with Mimir's bands now lifted, she could acquire a boat. She felt at home on the sea and effortlessly made her way to Avaheim, determined to find the owner of the ring, Ithin, or Ithwin or whatever, Vithar's lover. A strong sense of familiarity struck her when she disembarked and saw the white stone walls and tall steeples. She was about to ask the way to Ithin's house, but somehow her feet just kept moving, and she mechanically left, uh, let an inner power guide her. Ivan the Seafarer. I found it. Then, finally, her memories came back to her. It is coming back. I... I... I am... Ithin! Vithar! I started to think you would never return! <laughs> Me? I know, silly. You always make it. And what about you? You escaped the dragon? Piece of cake! I have been to your hometown. I have so much to tell you. About Angsmark and Mimir and Sameta and... And... <laughs> we have plenty of time to talk, my love. We'll buy a new boat and talk while the setting sun set our sails ablaze. And the silver of mackerel shoals crests the waves. And the fair wind brings tears to our eyes. <laughs> did you write this, Ord? How did you guess? And that Vither, I suppose that's a younger you. <laughs> oh, we just happen to look alike. <laughs> I guess Jonathan's own ending sucked, right? You wouldn't like it. This is better. Oh, I bet. Keep reading, Sarah. You're ruining the atmosphere. And the full moon's marble face guides our way. Oh my god, that water is beautiful. Look at that. It's too bad the game is really terrible. <sighs> I, uh, yeah, I regret playing it. Okay. I could, and I feel very strongly like I want to talk for like two hours about it. I kind of want to, um, do my usual thing recently of splitting my thoughts off into a separate video, but to be honest, I regret playing it, and I kind of want to just be done with it. So, I'll just speak for, I don't know, a few minutes or however long it takes. There's no need to go into detail about how the puzzles are designed. I have a problem with classic adventure game puzzles and how they're typically designed, and this is one of the most perfect examples of why they're so terrible. They're horrible. Classic adventure game puzzles. They always have been, and they still are. And it kind of ruined almost everything. But. 
I don't know. Let's mention the things that are good. There's some good things about this game. I do regret playing it, but it's not like it's all bad. Let's look for the positives. Uh, some of the art is pretty good. Those water reflections being a prime example. It's pretty good. Um, some of the voice actors are decent. Some of them are kind of terrible, but <laughs> some of them were decent. Oh, probably the, the probably the best thing about the game is the music. The music is really exceptional. So, major props for the music. And, um, that's... Depressingly, that's kind of it. That's all I can think of. Let's see what happens here. Is it going to go back to the menu? No, oh, it's back here. Sometime later. And the Secretary of Defense is hard-pressed to explain how these weapons deals could be sanctioned. The journalist who exposed the covert operation, Jorgen Anderson, has received a lot of attention and is nominated for this year's grand prize of journalism. Viewers may recognize Anderson for, earlier this month, revealing that a mission church pastor in Gothenburg accepted large sums in return for letters of indulgence. We have not managed to reach Anderson for an interview. Hello? Hi, Ord. Hey there. How are we feeling today? Better. It's healing nicely. Just wanted to check if you're all set for tomorrow. I sure am. I just made sure someone can look after Herbert. Herbert? Uh, my weeping fig. Oh, I'm sure he'll be all right. Speaking of which, I'll probably need to replace my plants once we get back to Stockholm. So I'll see you at the train station tomorrow morning then? Absolutely. I think it might be clearing up. Well, things are looking pretty good for them. So, something gonna happen? I'm waiting on the edge of my seat. Oh, I just clicked again and the game just closed. Okay, um, you're now staring at a black screen. Enjoy it. So anyway, like I was saying, honestly, I wish there was more I could say that I enjoyed about it. There wasn't that much. I was really interested in the story to begin with. And it was interesting for a while, but it's just... like there. The truth is, there is actually an interesting story in this game. It's there. It's somewhere deep inside. There is something interesting there. A story about uh, illegal gun trading and corruption. And this horribly messed up relationship between a father and a daughter. And how he deals with that. And how she deals with that. After everything that's happened. There's something there. But the problem is just that it's buried under a mountain of shit. Which makes me so sad. So, yeah. That game just depressed me. And not because of the story is really depressing, but just because... Pss, there's so much potential there. But again, there are some things I enjoyed about it. Some of the art's pretty good. And the music is really exceptional. And there is some semblance of an interesting story there. It just wasn't allowed to shine. Oh well. Well, thank you for coming along with me through the trials and frustrations. I'm, I certainly hope this series was more interesting to watch than it was to play. <laughs> Dear God, I really hope so. So, thank you for watching.